Honourable Member for Edmonton Strathcona. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Um, I'm rising, Mr. Speaker, to speak in support of Motion 497 on energy efficiency. I congratulate my colleague from Drummond for this motion, which is, of course, timely given that all of the leaders of the world are gathering this week in New York, sadly, except for the Prime Minister of this country, to work on deeper cuts to greenhouse gases in the globe. My colleague's motion calls for government implementing implementation of an energy efficiency program to encourage homeowners, commercial building owners, and businesses to reduce their energy consumption in an effort to fight climate change, to reduce Canadians' energy bills, and to create jobs and stimulate the economy. And I'm pleased, Mr. Speaker, uh, to have heard the speech by the Parliamentary Secretary, who I've enjoyed working on several committees, and the fact that she is showing that there certainly is value in investing in energy efficiency, and that the government to date has taken some measures, but as I would like to speak to, is there is a lot more that the government has promised and they could do. The International Energy Agency has continued to call on governments around the world, including Canada, to take action on what they have identified as the two critical global crises. Those two crises, as identified by the International Energy Agency, are the demand for energy, which is growing in the world, and climate, climate change. The International Energy Agency has issued a call to all nations to make more substantial investment in renewable power and energy efficiency to address both of those crises. In parallel to this, Canadian families are facing a record household debt at the same time as energy prices are rising, both for transportation, for homes, for farms, and for businesses. The sad thing is ready measures are readily available. The technology exists. The initiatives and the interest in working on energy efficiency is, exists to address both of these. Among these are the concerted efforts to reduce energy use and demand, um, <coughs> excuse me, demand side management. So yes indeed, um, as the world progresses, as developing nations also uh, seek the kind of lives that we benefit here in the Western world, there is an increasing demand for energy, both uh, for home heating, to provide uh, food for their families, and to make use of the kinds of appliances and, that, that we have and we've benefited from. But at the same time, we have the opportunity to be providing means to them as well as to us for greater energy efficiency and to reduce that great demand on increased energy use. Energy efficiency, Mr. Speaker, not only reduces pollution and greenhouse gases, it offers substantial savings on energy bills and creates well-paying, skilled jobs in our local communities. So what has been done and what could be done to make this happen? Sadly, under this government, very little. First of all, the energy retrofit program. This, Mr. Speaker, has been an incredibly popular and oversubscribed program. To their credit, some years back, the government, under a lot of pressure, agreed to return this program, but for only one year. What was the problem with that? Only some Canadian families and businesses could benefit. Secondly, it's very hard for energy efficiency companies to gear up, oh, thank you very much, to gear up quickly enough in order to be able to um, build a program and reach out to assist. And sadly, a lot of the, of the operations that were developing in my community fell apart because it just wasn't long-term support. <clears throat> It's a significant loss as partnering between federal, provincial, territorial, and municipal governments can actually move energy efficient programs forward. Some municipalities and some provinces have continued to forge ahead. Sadly, in my own province, they backed off. Uh, there was a, province, a promise this past spring for Alberta to put $30 million in, which if partnered with the federal government would be good. We're waiting to see what will happen with the new Premier of Alberta. Um, reconfiguring programs to direct assistance to the most in need, though, is very important, Mr. Speaker. In past, only those who had the deeper pockets could benefit from these programs because, of course, the government assistance is only supplementing the investment by the families or the businesses themselves. 
and so it's only those who would have the spare cash who could take advantage of applying for and benefiting from these programs. So if we move forward, Mr. Speaker, with an energy retrofit program, I would strongly recommend that the federal government work with the province and municipalities on coming up with a means to target those most in need, uh, the low income, fixed income, seniors, Aboriginal communities. We should also consider combining those initiatives with access to programs such as solar power, because that also reduces the drawdown on the grid. In a province such as mine, Alberta, the vast majority of our electricity is provided by coal-fired power, which is a huge source of greenhouse gases and pollution. And uh, by, by getting off the grid or feeding into the grid cleanly, we can actually partner in with energy efficiency. Um, I would like to, to share, Mr. Speaker, uh, with the fantastic initiative in Alberta between uh, non-government organizations, major industry and government, the Alberta Energy Efficiency Alliance. And they have been promoting uh, a major program which they think can significantly reduce greenhouse gases and also create employment. And they say that there are a lot of non-economic barriers to using these. Some of those include uh, inappropriate price signals, limited product availability, lack of energy literacy, and the access to capital financing. And that is why it will be really important for the federal government to move forward and partner. What is the second area, Mr. Speaker, where the federal government could assist? Well, I think that as uh, uh, our colleague across the way, the Parliamentary Secretary, mentioned, there was a review that was undertaken by the Parliamentary Committee on Operations. And I'm pleased to say, Chair, that that was a, a review that I actually initiated. And it was a fantastic review where we brought in experts uh, from across the country talking about uh, success that the federal government has made in reducing energy use in federal uh, infrastructure and facilities but additional savings that, that could be achieved. And Mr. Speaker, I think the greatest success that we made in that review was the unanimous conclusion by all of the parties who are represented in that committee that what we should be doing is targeting in making investments in energy efficiency is towards the considerable tax savings to Canadian taxpayers, not simply the reduction of greenhouse gases. And, uh, a number of recommendations were made to the government. Uh, we had a very substantial report made. But the New Democratic Party also made some additional recommendations based on what the experts had told to us. And also based on uh, the opportunity that I took to go down and meet with the U.S. Department of Energy. And some of the recommendations we suggest are legally prescribed energy efficiency targets. I noticed, Mr. Speaker, that the Parliamentary Secretary mentioned that uh, a number of European nations have legally prescribed targets so does the United States of America. We have a, a clean energy dialogue, a partnership with the United States, and I think it's time for Canada to move forward and adopt these kinds of prescriptive measures. Uh, we also recommended um, that there be interagency coordination, capacity building within the government sector, and dedicated budget allocations, and also a lot more attention to jobs and skill development. Um, it, it may be noted that in a number of the government reports they actually have undertaken that they are going to work towards identifying green jobs and what kind of skill development is needed and what kind of programs could support that. And uh, unfortunately we haven't seen any action on that. Um, I would like to quote uh, the former Minister of Natural Resources, uh, Joe Oliver, uh, speaking on the gains. I'm done? <coughs> Remind the member, can't, she can't re reference her colleagues by their given names. Pardon me. Even though he is the former Minister of Natural Resources, he still is a minister of the place, and so I apologize. The former Minister of Natural Resources um, had stated on this issue that uh, in a five-year period, the Eco-Energy Retrofit Program, uh, more than 640,000 homeowners benefited from that program. It's estimated that it triggered more than $8 billion in economic activity, and created and pro protect, protected thousands of jobs during a time of economic uncertainty. Well, as we know, across our country, we still have some regions that are facing a lot of unemployment. And so the value of this particular sector, energy efficiency, whether they are working on retrofitting government facilities or the retrofitting small businesses or homeowners, it allows for uh, our young skilled workers to stay in their own community and benefit for employment and support their families. 
Um, so on federal infrastructure, there we are. Uh, the number one conclusion I think it's fair to say that our committee made was this is a way to save taxpayer dollars. Rather than cutting more and more civil servants, we could actually invest in, in energy um, infrastructure. So to close, um, I would just like to add that in the government's own sustainable development strategy, they have five or six recommendations in this vein that they've committed to take action. What is missing is actual budgeted dollars to move in that direction. So I would encourage that the government come forth and actually genuinely commit to energy efficiency. Thank you.